Hey everyone, this week's episode of Witch Police Radio is brought to you by Roams at the Park Theatre, February 11th, with Wild Holmes and Robojome. Roams have harnessed their pop sensibilities into an alternative sound that's completely their own. With soulful melodies and bright, funky guitar riffs playing off gritty synths, the tracks are instant, high-energy, anthemic ear candy. Doors are at 7.15, show at 8 o'clock, and tickets are $10 in advance or 15 at the door. Tickets are available from the Park Theatre, Music Trader, and online at Ticketfly. If you like this podcast, please consider supporting it by going to patreon.com slash witchpolice. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. Huge thanks to all of our supporters so far, including Jarrett Delakis, our latest patron. He's actually someone who's going to be on the show talking about his own music in a few weeks. So it's very exciting uh, that a lot of our listeners are also musicians. You're listening to Garbage Hill, one of its first podcast network. Welcome to Witch Police Radio. I'm your regular host, Sam, and I'm here um, with a Slurpee on the table, and it's not mine this time. <laughs> it's just kind of a rarity, but I'm here with uh, Stacey James, so thanks for having me. Thank you. So I think that maybe just to, to start off, it might be good to kind of put where you're coming from in context, because I feel like I, I'd seen your name a lot, you know, recently, just, I, I kind of scour the internet finding local stuff as much as possible, because I'm a little bit obsessed, as evidenced by the show, <laughs> and your name was coming up a lot, just, I don't know if it was like event listings or whatever, but I... I recognized that it was something that was familiar about it. I couldn't place where I knew your name from. And then um, I listened to the interview you did with Ashley on the Winnipeg Music Project. Okay. And you start talking about your involvement in the hip-hop scene. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where I had heard your name from years ago, because I used to go to a lot of rap shows back oh, then okay. in that era and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> that, compared to what you do now, is obviously very different. I'd say. <laughs> so <laughs> if you could maybe just give some context as to where you're coming from musically and, and sort of how you got to where you are now, that would be a good maybe way to frame the whole interview. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Um, where I come from musically, starting how far back? Well, how far back do you want to go? <laughs> yeah. Well, we can do a lead up. Okay. So starting uh, when I was really young, um, I listened to, growing up, I was listening to Motown. Okay. That's what my mom was playing. Um, R&B, soul, and some hip hop, but not, not too much. But of course, I had my own love of hip hop. So I've always had that urban... Jones and Maboons. Yeah, yeah. When I was about 13, 14, I met a group of guys. Um, they were Headline Attracts is what we ended up forming. Okay, I remember uh, that name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Headline Attracts with, uh, there was um, Brad, um, I, I can't even remember his stage name, because I know them by their real name. Yeah, names. of course, yeah. So to give them, <laughs> um, yeah, Isis Niz. Um, okay. He was awesome. Um, Big Bear, yeah. um, uh, uh, I'm sure you knew, and uh, yeah, and so they, they encouraged me actually to start singing, they were like, I was like, I write and I sing, but I was really shy, they were like, no, try doing some hooks, come on, let's do it, let's do it, and so they kind of pushed me on to stage, and then I got more comfortable, um, and because I had already been writing, and I got a keyboard when I was about 14, 15, um, I, I already knew that I had more... You know, I wasn't going to be just sticking with doing hooks, right. you know, for hip-hop. Well, that's fairly limiting, I guess, right? If you're just I'd, on the hook every couple songs, right? Yeah. I'd say. And, you know, you can only do so much, you know, vocally, too. You don't want right. to kill it, right? Um, and I rapped, too, believe oh, yeah? it or not. Yeah, if you look around on the internet a bit, you'll you'll hear me rhyming. <laughs> How did that go? Um, Based on the way you just said that. <laughs> I was, uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's hard to, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to classify yourself as good, bad, or whatever, but right. I, I was okay, but no, <laughs> I'm not a rap, I'm not an MC. Right. Um, but yeah, and so I started looking for something a, a little bit more, and I uh, found on, I think it was Kijiji, there was a band looking for um, a frontman, it was a funk groove band called Grooveport, okay. and uh, so I joined on with them, and I was the frontman of that band, and wrote the funky R&B cool. songs, and then got my own band after that, and, and it just... That was it. Cool. I just kept going. But I still do hip-hop stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm not totally away from it. I'm actually working on a couple things right now that are very different. Cool. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so at what point did you become a solo artist? I mean, had you always been working on solo things in the background and just eventually kind of led to that being the main project? or? Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm always... I, I've always constantly been writing and writing and writing and writing. So yeah. even if it's not 
stuff that I feel like I'm going to do, I just hear it. And so I write it. So I need to plunk it somewhere, whether okay. it be an outlet through me, an outlet through another person, and like anywhere. It's just got to go somewhere. Okay. So I've definitely always been uh, doing my own thing in, in the back. So sure. do you still consider, I mean, the, the soul influence, the R&B influence, is that still fairly heavy in, in what you're doing now? Or have you kind of taken that and gone in some different directions as well? Uh, I'd say that it's definitely in there. Like, you can you can kind of hear an undertone yeah. of, of it in there. But I wouldn't say that it's as strongly there. Because <laughs> I was listening to what I could find of yeah. your stuff online, and I, I mean, I wasn't sure how to classify it, but I, I think there's more to it, obviously, than just that. I mean, there's more to it than just yeah, R&B right. stuff. So well, I guess what... Where are you coming from now as far as what you're influenced by and as far as what kind of sound you're trying to trying to put out there? I think uh, over over the years I've been influenced by so many different artists and so many different genres. Um, I mean, from Red Hot Chili Peppers to Prince. Like, I love Prince. Right. Um, you know, to... Queen to you know Florence and the Machine like I mean right. I'm, I I like so much music that I take in so much that I think it I guess it comes through in my output you know okay. um, so it, it is it, it's hard for me to classify myself I often run into that where people are like well what do you do well it's a hard question for anybody I think I, I find <laughs> that no matter who what kind of music someone plays if I'm asking them to fit themselves in the category it's difficult yeah. because yeah most people especially nowadays are they have so much stuff just pouring in yeah. that it's hard to figure out what to call what comes out, right? And I don't know. Like, and I, I, it actually, it's, it, it, it's like bothersome when I think <laughs> about it because I'm like, well, I, you, you want me to just be something, but, but I'm not. Right. So what do you tell someone then? So, I mean, if someone <laughs> uses your band, like a coworker or something, yeah. right, what do you, how do you explain it? Like, is I, there a simple kind of answer you give or? Yeah. The, the, the usual, I say, well, it's kind of a bluesy, funky, soul, poppy rock. <laughs> and they're like, oh, uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but that's that's probably the best way to put it. Is like, right, you know, some kind of mix of all of those, those it, things. Yeah, and it just kind of swings one way or the other. You know, depending on where it is. But the first album um, that I released in uh, February 2017. So it's coming up in a year, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. the year. In comparison to the one that I'm hoping to have out this summer, uh, 2018, I big difference. Yeah, big difference. Yeah, big difference. How? Uh, in sound. Um, because, uh, the previous album, I feel that it took a while to record, you know, it did take a while to record and I just changed and grown in so many different directions as a writer, yeah. uh, since the beginning of writing that, that material to now that I, I feel like I've outgrown it. <laughs> how long did that one take to put together? Like it's, uh, how long is a long time? How long is a long yeah, time? Yeah. We were recording for three well, four years. Mm. You know, yeah, so that is a pretty big amount of time to it is. one project. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we had some ups and downs, and you know, um, uh, blessed my guitarist the past, and you know, like it was just, it, it was a very hoo -hoo -hoo thing. Right. So, um, but got it done. But you know, I've had about three albums ready to you know, come yeah, yeah. <laughs> since, you know, so it's like, oh gosh, well, I'm really behind here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Do you yeah. find yourself, like, when you're, I mean, assu assuming in order to kind of get the word out about the album that you released last year, you're probably playing a lot of, a lot of the songs live, does that feel almost like it's old material that you want to push aside and work on new stuff live, or do you but do a good mix uh, of newer things and tracks from the old album? I haven't really been playing out okay. uh, too, too okay. much. Um, I think that part of that is because... Um, I've been really focused on upcoming projects okay. and also because, yeah, I've just, I've, I've outgrown that material so much yeah. that I, that I, I don't, I don't really like doing it. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Like it's true. Um, but that's okay. I mean, I, I can get into the groove and I'll, you know, I will pull them out, um, because I, I, I want to, if I have to. <laughs> right. But well, people are probably going to know them because they bought a CD. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's okay, and that's yeah. great, and I and that's that's yeah. But yeah, yeah, I'll I'll definitely be coming back over the the next little while with with new stuff. Okay. Yeah. Not to dwell on the whole what genre do you fit in thing because sure. it's really annoying. <laughs> but, no, uh, hey, but it's uh, okay. I'm just curious, like you know, with all those you know rock pop 
soul funk, all those, all those things you put in there. Mm-hmm. Does that give you sort of versatility as far as where, what kind of shows you're going to do in the city? Like, over has it kind of broadened the scope of where you can play, or is it make it more difficult because you're not so easily defined? Um, I think it broadens the scope in some ways. Okay. I mean, because I can pretty much go right into one category. So it's like if 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 someone were to say, okay, you know what, we have a, a venue here, they want a full set that's, you know, just like R and B soul, I'd yeah. take a, I'd be like, okay, take this, 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 this song and let's go like this with it right. and boom. Right. You know, there it is. So um in that sense it's good. Um but when it comes to describing myself for people that are potentially wanting to book they're right. like, okay, but which which one of those five things are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I'm a little bit of all of them. Yeah. Is there a sort of a um, scene within the scene that you think you fit into? I mean, are there other artists locally that kind of, whether they sound like you or not, you kind of feel a kinship with? Like, you feel like you, you fit well with them or you've maybe played a lot of shows with them or something like that? Or you... uh, I feel that way with uh, a few bands, you know? Like, I mean, there's a few artists. But, you know, I think we're all very different. I have a hard time comparing myself to other people because they're you know when I watch them I'm like oh yeah <laughs> but I don't feel that way about myself so it's right. like well how do I com- uh, it just it's like an apple and an orange it doesn't work for me okay. but uh, yeah okay no fair enough you kind of, I'm like did I answer the question <laughs> no but yes <laughs> but it, no it's okay it's, I mean it's okay. just because I, I, I don't go to as many shows as I used to now that I have kids and stuff mm-hmm. I used to go to shows all the time now it's like very pick and choosy and I can't help but feel that the way the local music scene is set up now is very different from when I was younger going to shows all the time, mm-hmm. in that it seems like there's a lot more, and I could be totally wrong on this, people who have been going to shows the whole time can prove me wrong, but it seems like it's more sort of uh, sectioned off into little categories, whereas I remember in the late 90s, early 2000s, a lot of shows where you'd have just this massive range of different kinds of bands all playing the same show. Yeah. And it seems like now there's you know country bands over here, funk bands over here, rappers over here, and it's all, everyone has their own mini scenes within Separate. scenes within scenes. Mm-hmm. So I guess, yeah, I guess sort of what the question was really going at is um, as someone who has a di- diverse range of genres, where, how do you fit into those, how do you get yourself into those pockets uh, that are so already defined? You know, does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. You know what? And I think that it used to be easier. Yeah. This was sort of it definitely way. was easier to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I think I've been really lucky. I mean, cause I have played on bills that are metal. Oh, really? I have played on, yeah, metal to rock, to straight hip hop, uh, to, you know, blue, like bluegrass roots. Like, I mean, I've, I've played on the same night as completely, like categorized genres yeah, and they've managed to put me in there. So I guess I've been pretty lucky, but I can definitely say that you're right there. It, it, it has been changing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you don't see that very much anymore. That's too bad. Yeah, actually, right. it's too bad. Cause that was, that was always my favorite thing is you go to a show and there'd be a rapper opening and then, you know, a punk band and then there's like a ska band and then, folk singer and whatever is all over the place and it yeah. seems like that's kind of hopefully that comes back uh, you know what it would be cool it would be very cool to do that but I guess also for you know marketing wise they, they think well if a person's going for punk they want all punk yeah exactly you know which you know uh, well, maybe mm. it's probably true but they it would be nice if they could be introduced to folk singer or something as well and then hey wait this is good also exactly it's a but, good way to you know cross promote um, totally yeah. and some of the you know get some of the talent meeting each other yeah. as well Definitely, right? yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a big thing. Because um, yeah. everyone ends up in each other's bands anyway, eventually, because what a bit. So, <laughs> the music scene is so incestuous, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, that's true.
So you mentioned um, an album you were hoping to put out in the, in the summer. Have you mm-hmm. started recording that or anything yet, or is that still kind of conceptual at this point? Oh no, it's like it's uh, it's all being um, mapped. Okay, okay. So we're all like, I guess, at the pre-production phase, and all the pieces are written and everything, just making sure that it's all mapped out properly, and cool. then do the final push. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for this summer. It may get delayed. Right. That happens, but we'll see. Well, it sounds like already, though, it's a shorter amount of time than the first one, right? It definitely will one, be. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no question, because I've got a couple others i got to get out, too. So it's like, <laughs> hey, let's let's crank this wheel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? for sure. Like, yeah. Because the stuff, I'm going to start forgetting it, because I keep writing more. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> let's, come on. Yeah, we got to do this. So it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's fun. When you write, is it kind of, are, like, are you sort of compelled to, to get out whatever it is on, on the paper? I mean, it sounds like you have a lot of stuff that you're trying to trying, trying to do. So what is, I guess what's your process for, for writing a song? Uh, <laughs> is, there, is there a process? <laughs> I'm just like, oh man, I guess it totally depends. I mean, sometimes I'll get words first. Yeah. Sometimes I'll get the music first. It's usually the music. Okay. Because I find that with the sounds of the chords, it's... I find an emotion, like okay. either it feels like something, and that feeling is what I'm going to write about. So um, that's usually how it starts. Okay. But yeah, no, I have, um, I have uh, the wheels always going. Okay. <laughs> I, I went off track, and I was no, like, okay. "Hey, what was the question?" <laughs> What's about songwriting? Because I mean, it, it, the, the impression that I'm getting from talking to you about, you know, the things you want to record and, and all this, it sounds like you have a lot of material that you need to document at some point, right? Dump, so, yeah. yeah. So is it, like, when, when, when you have an idea, is it kind of like, okay, this has to be a song now? Do you get feel, like, compelled to just push it out and make it into something? As or? long as I can, yeah. I absolutely will. And I record my hands all the time because okay. um, when I get an idea, I'm like, okay, and I'll... <laughs> you ready for this? Sure. Yeah. I will tuck my cell phone into my shirt okay. and record my fingers. Oh, just to get the piano? Yeah, yeah so that I know, so that I won't forget it. Okay. And I have it. Um, my notepad, like, you know, I just, I put my ideas, I have a notebook with me or my cell phone at all times and I'm constantly dumping ideas. You know, it's just, I have to, otherwise I get, I feel like it, I get upset or something inside because it's, it's just too much. It's like, I need to get them out. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So even if it's not like a final recording, just to sit down, plunk out the full idea, and go do 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 do, and do you know, and have the idea out of my head. Yeah, freeing. <laughs> it's so freeing. <laughs> How many of those ideas actually become full songs? Do a lot of them just stay as ideas, and you move on from them, or do um, they usually get developed further? You know what? I find that I, whenever I have a writer's block, I go back to my my ideas. Okay. So I go to my ideas or my half rights. I call them. Those are the ones that are like half written and then there's nothing at the end. Right. Um, so when I have a writer's block, that's when I, I go back to all that stuff. I go to the ideas and I'll start building on them or I'll go to those as I'd mentioned. Yeah. Um, or I'll go to just my lyrics and be like, okay, well, maybe I can compose something to this. Or, you know, go to my composition and be like, hey, well, maybe I can write something to this today. So I'll just leave all my pieces there and go back. Like I, That's one thing I've learned is I do not force myself. I can't. Otherwise, I I write crap. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's true. I just it, gotta let it flow. Do you always write on piano? Like, is that the, the instrument you mainly use That's for recording? That's my or? favorite. Yeah. That's my passion instrument, for okay. sure. But um, I find myself uh, writing on the acoustic a lot. But whenever I'm writing on the acoustic guitar, I'm writing bass lines. Okay, okay. And I end up slapping my acoustic, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so I grab the bass guitar, and I'm like, hey, well, this is a bass line, and then right. I'll rewrite the acoustic line or whatever, because it always moves places. <laughs> but is there like an obvious difference between something you wrote on a, on a guitar versus something you wrote on piano, or do they just eventually work out to be about the same kind of sound? Uh, I think there's a difference. Like, does it change the tone of the song overall if you, if you first write it on a guitar, or I. Yeah, yeah. I is it noticeable? Do you think beyond just you noticing it? Like, do you think it's if someone heard your album, they could pick that out, or is that sort of way too? I think they'd be able to pick out that it sounds different, but they might not be able to pick out that it's a guitar. Right. Okay. Okay. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, but I think that yeah, for sure. When I write on the guitar, it does come out different. Okay. Do you think it's just because of the difference in? how versatile each instrument is. Like, I mean, because piano, obviously, you've got a lot more, <laughs> you got a lot yeah. more range, right? There's Just, a, a lot yeah. more places to go. Yeah. Um, 
No, I think it's... Maybe it's, uh, like, without sounding like a crazy one, <laughs> uh, I think it, it has to do with my connection to the instrument. Okay. Like, um, with the piano, I'm more free. Okay. Is that just because of familiarity? Like, it I like think a, yeah. that partially, but also just, I think, I don't know, that, or the sound. But uh, on the guitar, it, it definitely makes me... It's like a different... I think it, it puts me in a different genre. Okay. I think that's probably the best way to explain it. Is I, I want to go a little bit more... Folky, acoustic rocky something. Okay. More than... Guitar. Yeah, yeah, steering away from my more fo- funky self. Okay. Actually, when you give me an electric, that changes. Yeah, for sure. I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Definitely, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, eh, yeah. Then I want to get funky. <laughs> so. so since you obviously play a lot of instruments, uh, when you're recording, do you play a lot of instruments as well? Or is it just mainly piano and vocals? Or uh, Mainly piano and vocals. Okay. Um, I play a lot of instruments, but I'm not... Um, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm super good on all of them. They, okay. They're definitely my songwriting tools. I mean, I can get by, but I'm not confident enough to to play them live. Okay. okay. Um, and I'm not confident enough to let it be the final on my... You know, because I know that whatever I come up with, or whatever I have come up with, you take that to somebody that's made that instrument their baby. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they're going to write with that or, you know, whatever you come there with. Even if it just it's just my piano part, you know, it's like, well, here's the base of the song. You know, you know that they're going to make it like, whoa. Sure. So I'd rather have whoa. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> whoa is good. Yeah. 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 Do you use the same, uh, do you work with the same musicians uh, as much as possible? Or do Try you, to. Yeah. Yep, yeah. definitely. Um, I mean, I think when you have musical chemistry... Yeah, yeah. You hold on to that, you know. It's and it's very, it's a very special thing when you find people that you can just completely connect with musically. Uh, yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no That's way. That's the to explain whole thing again, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. So, how long have you been working with some of the people you're with now? I mean, is it uh, these long-standing musicians you've had? Uh... Uh, well, I guess so. Yeah, like I mean, they they've been around for. A minute. Uh, I've been with my my bass player has put up with me for nine years now. Oh well, it's a pretty long time to work with somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, my well, the drummer that's working with me. It, it, it's funny actually. He uh, is it okay if I use names? Yeah, for absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. so it's up to you. You want to yeah. shout them out? Well, yeah. no, I love I love them. Um, Jim Jolly is the bass guitar. Okay. Um, and he he's great. And then I have Doug Northcott. He started by, uh, we we were going there to record. He's an, an engineer. Um, and then, yeah, he ended up in my band. Cool. <laughs> That's convenient, having yeah. an engineer in your band, yeah. Yeah, and, well, and just so his ear, he's very talented. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he's been around for a few years now. And then uh, I, we've been working with uh, Joe Curtis. He, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he... Uh, uh, recorded on the album with us. Cool, cool. You know, as long as his schedule's available, you know, he's he'll perform with us. So he's done that for a little bit, but busy guy. And oh my gosh, he's amazing. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some stuff. Oh, yeah. Some stuff, yeah, yeah. Like, whoo, yeah. And uh, and Mark Barron recently uh, came on with us, um, and that would be about I guess two years ago. Okay. And he uh, does keys and. Uh, and guitar, but uh, he will be on the upcoming album, which will be great. Cool, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
giving There's glow in your soul Twinkle in your eye That's why I'm gonna keep you by my side I've been back down Over and over again It tells me that So how did this song, I mean, you know, say you wrote a song on your own with acoustic guitar, for example. Mm-hmm. How much of a change is it when you bring it and you have a full band playing it? I mean, does it does it fundamentally change the structure of the song? Or does it feel like they're just kind of emphasizing what you already had? I mean, like, I guess how much input do they have to what the eventual outcome of the song becomes? I think it depends. I think it depends on the song. Okay, you fair know, some, some songs don't need anything else to you know hmm, drive them you know it just they all they need is a little extra embellishment you know sure. they don't need you know too much there but when it comes to input like in saying you know what like do you think that maybe this would sound better i you know it's like oh well, of course you know <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter how far the songs progress i mean there are some there were some songs that had been written for six six years oh, wow. that were changed. Like Wanna Sing on my album there. Um, some key changes, you know, some things that were a bit different, you yeah. know? So, yeah, it, it depends. It really okay. depends on the song. But we're all free spirits. <laughs> so. Well, and obviously, you know, the length of time you've worked with some of them, too, you obviously trust them enough and they trust you enough that you can work together to... I hope so. Like yeah. You would hope after nine years or whatever, or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Like I mean, yeah. yeah. Jim, you know, it's 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 great. I mean, and previously, our, the drummer that was with me, he was th- with us for you know ten years. So oh, well, well. you know, as long as they're there, you're there. You yeah, know? yeah. It's, it's 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 great. It's like a family. You know, you gotta take care of each other. That's what you want. I mean, I think, I think ideally you want that for your band. Yeah. Well, yeah. for anybody. I mean. Yeah. I want them taken care of. I want them all taken care of. <laughs> For sure, yeah, yeah. So in addition to the hopefully upcoming album in the summer, uh, what else do you have coming up in, in the next few months? Uh, well, um, in, uh, we're aiming.
naming for May, but um, the fifth um, Women Helping Women event. Okay. Um, I'm the uh, founder and organizer of that, and it's uh, in support of our local uh, women shelters. Okay. Um, that, and, uh, yeah, it's all female entertainment, um, musical entertainment. Cool. Um, and all different genres. It's a full night of, of, of entertainment and draws, and it's all in support of the shelter. So, yeah, fifth year. Cool. I'm really looking forward to it. Just trying to finalize a couple of the last details, but the, there's going to be the information will be out there awesome. for sure. So hopefully about 10 people hear this, they can look that up anyway and find out who's... Yeah, yeah. That, would, that, would be, that would be cool. But yeah, there's going to be a, a pretty good lineup of artists again cool. this year. Cool. So it's a really great way to get all the women together. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of women in the local scene too. Oh, there's it seems so like every many. every day you hear of new bands that are yeah. starting up, it's great. I actually have asked for a second day this year. Oh, I've really? asked, you know, I'd like to make it a weekend event. We've yeah. got so much music here in the yeah. city that I'm going to make it a week one day <laughs> if I can. You, well, you may be able to oh, I mean, at some point, yeah. yeah. Easy. There's yeah. enough female talent here to do that. You know, I like, it is women helping women, but I mean, we, a lot of us have a full band of men, sure, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. so, but yeah, it, it's great. Do you think that's something that you've seen the kind of increase over the years? Like the, just the prominence of women in the local scene? Do you think that's, it's grown or... Because, I mean, just, uh, you know, there's always been, especially when I was going to punk shows and stuff as a teenager, so it was, there was always women in some of the bands, but it seems like now, I don't know if there's more or if it's just, they're more visible. I, I don't know if it's uh, if that's what's happened or, or I don't know, but it, it seems to me like I, 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 I've been noticing more and more bands with prominent women in the band, whether it's not maybe just the drummer in the back, it's the singer and the guitarist, and, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. So it's very cool to see, but I don't know, do you, have you seen kind of that grow a little bit? Maybe they... Maybe if you if if I look at all the different genres. Yeah, I'm sure within so. some genres it's always been the same, but yeah. Yeah, you know what? I don't know. Yes and no. I mean, I when I when I think back to like when I first started out, mm-hmm. you know, in a band, in the band, like that was probably 12, 13 years ago. There was a lot of women on yeah. the scene. I don't know. It might, if anything, it might seem like there's a bit less now. Oh, really? Okay. But there was a huge female hip hop scene. Yes, right. Where there really isn't very much. I haven't seen anymore. any in a while. No, no. you know. Um, do we have any female MCs in the city? Someone asked me that question the other day, and I couldn't think of any off the top of my head. Look, I mean, I can think of a couple that are good, but they don't do shows. I don't know. Right. Wow, I'm going to start thinking. Well, it's an that. interesting question. You might you want to find one for your show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the, the reason I ask is because I recently um, interviewed uh, the directors of a movie that's coming out in March called Girls With Guitars. Okay. And it's about women in the local punk scene. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just very interesting, some of the things they were saying about you know how they were influenced to get into bands, like all the filmmakers and musicians too, and they were interest, influenced to get into bands by seeing, you know, there'd be one girl in a punk band when they were 14 years old, and it's like, oh, you can do this, I want to do this too, right? Yeah. So, I mean, and uh, as someone with two daughters, who I'm hoping they get into music as well, like, hearing about things like your show, that's awesome, to, to kind of promote the, you know, the women in the local scene, it's very cool to hear. Yeah, thank you.
So since it's the fifth year, um, <laughs> like, can people go anywhere to find out information about it yet? Or is it all going to be announced sort of in future? Is there like a website or anything for the recurring event? Or is it just a uh, I have one? it on Facebook. Okay. Like, I do have a Facebook page. Okay, cool. um, I'm not going to lie. I haven't been super, super good at keeping it up. <laughs> right. You know, but I do go on there and, and say, you know, like, especially once I have a date booked. Yeah, Or for when sure, I'm yeah. looking for artists, I, I throw all my feelers out and then I'm pumping it. But through the year until the event, I don't do a whole lot on okay. there. But just... there are pictures and you can see what we've done in the past. And, um, yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been at it and it's growing and yeah. I'm, I'm hoping this year will be another smash. Yeah, it's good. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah. like a good event. It, yeah. Well, you know what? All we can do is uh, keep keep it going. There's a uh, there's a lot of females in the city that can that want to do this, you know, and they get to perform, they get to meet each other, they get to showcase, and all for a, a, a cause. And we've got a lot of shelters, and they're doing great things. So it's, yeah. keep the wheel turning. For sure. Cool. <laughs> cool. So if someone's hearing this podcast and they're hearing you for the first time on here, yeah. what's the best thing for them to do if they want to find more information or, or you know, find a, where they can hear your music and things like that? Uh, well, they can find me, <laughs> they can find me anywhere. Um, StacyJames.ca. Okay. I have my website. Um, but my handle for most places is Stacy James Writer, all one word. You okay. can find me through Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook that way. Um, yeah. Okay. And, so, or just a Google of Stacy James. Believe it or not, I <laughs> Google my name and I come up on well, like the first page. It's probably good. <laughs> I know that's. There's got to be some more Stacy Jameses out there. Like, there are. Yeah. yeah. There's a. There's. There's one in uh, Europe and there's another one in the States. That are performers too, like those musicians or. Uh, just... Yes. Yes. Okay. One is like um, I guess country jazz, okay. and the other one okay. is electro an electro DJ. Oh, Your okay. stuff is really cool, actually. But yeah, sometimes uh, like you'll our stuff gets mixed up on like Spotify and iTunes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So someone be listening to, like a playlist of your stuff, and then some electro thing comes in. And... Yeah, yeah. So that that's frustrating sometimes because like I had access into her her Spotify, I think. Oh wow! And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! When I sent them an email, I'm like, I'm not that Stacy James. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's okay. I fixed it, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, yeah. yeah. If you think this like, podcast is about you and you're listening, oh my yeah, goodness, yeah, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> yeah. um, and then you have the album that came out uh, yeah, almost a year ago now. Uh, where can people find that? Yeah, it's uh, online. Okay. It's available online. It will be uh, available in the local stores. <laughs> I'm gonna go footin'. I'm gonna woo woo that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, for now it is available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, okay. Amazon, um, and all that. All the typical things people get music from nowadays. Bandcamp. Like, Cool, okay. That's another one, yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, if people want to hear more episodes of this show, uh, go to witchpolice.com, click on podcast. There's, I don't know how many at this point, 270 or something. It's, there's a lot. You can go there, find all of them, uh, uh, you know, listen whenever you like. And if you tune in to UMFM on Sundays at midnight, you can hear old episodes of the show. So right now it's what, j- late January recording this. It might not air till I don't know, May or something, or June. But, but no. at that point it's kind of cool because even though they're always available online to listen to, if someone just happens to be tuning in at that, that hour, they might hear when they missed and, and realize, oh, hey, this person's putting on an album. And then, because it's six months later, it's some like, of the albums, it's already there. I can go yeah, buy it. Yeah, that's so, cool. <laughs> so hopefully people are still listening at midnight on Sundays because, uh, you know, it's a prime time for radio. <laughs> uh, why not? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, and, and again, social media and all that, you can find Witch Police. 90% of what you find when you type in Witch Police is this. There's occasionally... There, I don't think there's anything. There's some weird things. There's like this one weird news story from Africa. I forget what country it is. Really? And it's like a quote from a police. It says like something she was a witch says police or something and it, oh, you know, it comes up it's, it's from some country <laughs> it's very odd yeah that is funny yeah, yeah well yeah. otherwise the little funny don't keep thing. clicking it or it's gonna keep I know it's gonna, I keep clicking because it it's funny it's like oh this is the same article yeah. Yeah, yeah. at least from Ghana or something but yeah uh, I'm gonna look now yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna it's very, you're gonna bump it up now too <laughs> I will yeah. oh no oh no I won't I won't look that's okay it's okay yeah. I don't mind yeah, yeah. 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 SEO I'm not gonna yeah <laughs> awesome well yeah thanks for having me and uh, people should definitely check out the uh, the album that comes out and then the, the, the women event too mm-hmm. which would be uh, I'm Here's on her, or I'm gonna find me.